Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. This is part two of creating the look of the classic retro sci-fi movie, Tron. Picking up from where we left off, shift click on the black layer to make it active as well, and merge the two layers by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Control click or command click on the new layer icon to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill the empty layer with black, and since black is your foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the grid active, and zoom out of your image by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard a few times. Open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, change the angle to 45 degrees. Click the chain link icon, which locks the width and the height together. Now, when we change either the width or the height, they'll both match. In either field, type in 200. Then, press Enter or Return. Since the grid actually extends past our visible image, we need to crop it to the dimensions of our document. To do this, press Ctrl or Command A to select the dimensions of our document, and go to Image, and Crop. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Zoom out a few more times, and open your Transform tool again. Go to the top middle anchor point, and when you see a vertical double arrow, drag it down approximately halfway or more. We can always adjust it later. Go to a bottom corner, and when you see a white arrowhead, press and hold Control Shift Alt on Windows or Command Shift Option on a Mac as you drag it out approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return and fit it back onto your canvas. As before, we need to crop away the grid that extends past our visible image. Press Ctrl or Command A and go to Image and Crop. Then deselect it. Open your Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Click this circular icon at the bottom of the panel to make a selection of all the tonal values of your grid. Open back your Layers panel and invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Press the Delete key on your keyboard to delete the black areas of the grid. Then deselect it. We can trash the black layer since we don't need it anymore. Open the document of your cutout subject that you saved in Part 1. To place it into your Tron document, press V on your keyboard and drag it onto the tab of your Tron document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, press and hold Shift as you drag it down onto your image. Then release. Pressing Shift kept your subject centered and in position. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of your cutout subject to make a selection of its shape. Now that we have its selection, we can trash the cutout. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Since the grid is inside the subject instead of outside, We'll invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Double click the grid layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the color box. Pick a color you'd like for the grid. Since I already know the color I want, I'll type it in the hexadecimal field 1570FF. Once you pick your color, click OK. Click Outer Glow and the color box. Pick a darker version of the color you picked for your grid. I'll type in 0C00FF. The opacity is 100%, the spread is 3%, 
and the size is 40 pixels. Then click OK. I think I'd like to lower the horizon line of the floor to better match the perspective of the car. To do this, I'll click the chain link to unlock the grid and its layer mask. This allows us to resize and reposition either of them independently of the other. I'll open the Transform tool and drag the Transform down. Next, we'll create the stormy sky. Drag the bottom layer to the top of the Layers panel and change its Blend Mode to Linear Dodge. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. In this layer, we'll create our sky. Your foreground and background colors should still be black and white respectively. Click the background color and pick a color for the clouds. I'll type in 1570FF. Once you pick your color, click OK or press Enter or Return. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Go back to Filter, Render, and Difference Clouds. Repeat the filter by pressing Ctrl or Command F. Change its Blend Mode to Linear Dodge. Zoom way out of your document and open your Transform tool. Go to the bottom middle anchor point and drag it up to meet the top of your grid. Go to a top corner and as before, press and hold Ctrl Shift Alt on Windows or Command Shift Option on a Mac as you drag it out approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return and fit it back onto your canvas. To mask out the sky inside your subject, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of the layer mask next to the sky. Next, we'll make a reflection of your subject onto the floor. Make your subject active and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Press and hold Shift as you drag it down to where your reflection meets the bottom of your subject or thereabouts. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. Again, if you don't have this filter, use your Motion Blur filter as a workaround. Your Path Blur will retain its earlier settings. Click OK at the top. Next, we'll fade out the reflection on the floor. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the reflection. Open your Gradient tool and make sure the linear gradient is active. Click the Gradient bar and click the Black-White Gradient. Then click OK. Go to the bottom of your reflection and press and hold Shift as you drag up a vertical line approximately two-thirds to three-quarters to the top of the reflection. To mask out the reflection that remains inside your subject, control click or command click on the layer mask to make a selection of its shape and then invert the selection by pressing control or command shift I. Click the layer mask under it to make it active and press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill it with black. Then deselect it. Lastly, I'll show you how to quickly cast your image into one color. Make your top layer active. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Check Colorize and drag the hue to a color you like. Since I already know the color I want, I'll just type it in. Drag the saturation all the way to the right to intensify the color of our virtual world. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.